Hello everyone and happy Thanksgiving. This is Ray. I recently posted some code on cockpitbuilders.com which uh, is getting a lot of interest and that is code, Teensy code for a wet compass for Teensy 3.2 but I imagine it could probably work uh, with any microcontroller. Uh, currently I have this interface to X-Plane and it's pretty simple. It's something I've been wanting to do for a long time but just never got around to it and I uh, was kind of afraid to tackle the whole a zero crossing issue when you pass true north. Uh, as you get closer and closer to north uh, from the west side of the compass you'll get to 359 then suddenly you've got to reset everything to zero and continue on your turn through 30, 60, etc. So uh, found a couple snippets on, on the internet to help guide me through that but let me take you through this real quick. First thing we're going to do is walk you through what, what I did. Uh, this is a Teensy uh, 3.2 microcontroller. Probably a lot more than I need uh, just for this simple project, but uh, I'm, I'm, I like 3.2s. They've been very reliable for me, and they're they're fairly cheap, so I don't really have an issue with uh, adding one, you know, per project. This is a looks like I can read it here Precision something ink uh, Lockheed blah blah blah. It's just a typical uh, vertical card wet compass. I really like this style, uh, but you can pretty much do anything you want with this because. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to go ahead and take it apart and uh, there we go. Take some screws out. Uh, on the back here you'll see a stepper motor. These are typically used in automotive applications for you know, your speedometer and RPM gauges and things like that. Uh, what I've done to this, and I'll show you here in a moment, is I've modified it a little bit and, and have removed the stop inside the motor so it can do a full 360 degree revolution. This is a 720 uh, steps per revolution. So mathematically it works out nice. You just uh, divide it by two and you've got 360 degrees per revolution. So one thing you have to be very careful of, especially with the Virgo card compass, is that the metal plate with all the numbers and, and lettering on it is very fragile. So you've got to be very careful. And you can see that when I pull it out, it goes with it and you can see it, it very easily catches on the edge so you've got to be extremely careful when you pull it out so I would suggest doing it very slowly and you can even hear is even if I'm being very careful you can still hear it grinding on the sides but once you get it out you know, you've got your case not really much to it probably uh, I think they might call that pig metal but I'm not quite sure what they're composed of because they have to be non-magnetic so here's the basics of the compass very very thin compass card and on the side you can see how it's all geared uh, typically what you would see in here is a little barb magnet mounted vertically which drives this gear which in turn turns the compass card all of that's been removed and I've essentially done nothing more than super glue a screw, a screw here on the end of it some heat shrink which attaches it to the stepper motor shaft. On the other side, I have added, I think these are called opto isolators or something like that. But anyway, what, what happens is when these when these things sense a break in the light uh, from the uh, transmitter to receiver, they'll output either a one or zero uh, according to however they're programmed. And then here you can see, I hope you can see, is I've added a little tab here so that when this compass rotates it'll pass through the the sensor and either turn on or off the signal indicating that it is at a, a known position once you get the compass to a known position then you can slew your compass card to true north so you have a known starting point pretty simple and then of course on the back you've got your uh, stepper motor and the wires coming out for the sensor, all wired into the TNC 3.2. Very simple concept. Um, didn't really take long once I got going, and the end result is, is fairly uh, in, um, incredible. So that's pretty much it. Uh, you can get these off of eBay. Uh, you can buy uh, other types of wet compasses, or you can even make one yourself. Just take a piece of plastic PVC pipe, cut it to about a half an inch I would say and mount it on a 
some sort of a rotational pin and you can pretty much accomplish the same thing by adding a stepper motor to the back of it. One thing to keep in mind is when you buy certain stepper motors, most of them come with a stop uh, so they don't rotate through a, a full 60 degrees. So what you'll have to do is find the gear that has the stop on it. And it happens that this is the gear head that has the stop. And I don't even know if you can see this in the video, but right here is the little piece of plastic that you can just take a little tiny X-Acto knife blade and cut that off right there. So that renders the gear so it rotates uh, through the full 360 degrees. Don't forget the other pieces that you need to keep around. And then just simply put it back. And holding the gear in place from the outside, like that, simply line everything back up, like so. And if you're lucky, everything will just snap back into place, like that. This might take some trial and error. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if you have to do this a few times to get the uh, hang of it. But that uh, is how you modify one of these stepper motors so it rotates a full 360. Uh, this one, as you can see, I did not turn that or I did not trim that little piece of plastic off. So you can see it will stop at the point where it limits itself to about 350 degrees, I would say. So there you have it. Um, leave your comments below, and I'll leave some links to the websites where you can pick these up for fairly cheap. Uh, the compass you can pick up off of eBay. I like the vertical car compass, but you might like the typical horizontal wet compass, uh, your preference or whatever aircraft you're building. So thank you for watching.